News of our stream's demise have been greatly exaggerated. How was that? Do we need to take, do we need to do that again? Do we need, can we print that? Can no, we print that, that one, take? That one did work, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got it all figured out. <laughs> Welcome everyone. It took about third time's a charm on that one. Uh, thanks for being so patient. We had some uh, technical difficulties um, on, um, well, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna point <laughs> who but uh wait no i'm not yeah, gonna are point you pointing no, no no the other way point the other way there you go there you go yep. that's to me yeah it's um it was um i mean ray thinks it's because i use a pc <laughs> i was also getting i had to iron my shirt and get really to tie my tie She's yeah like, you're looking good man you're you looking know, good. i wanted to i wanted to just look good today you know yeah so, so uh, welcome to the stream, everyone. Uh, Tyler told me before we got on for this, because we have a, a tech run through before we uh, get on and uh, or go live. And Tyler was had told me, well, I'll be right, you know, I'll be a couple of seconds because uh, I got to make some tea. And he shows up in like a three piece, suit, you know, <laughs> uh, and then forgets to make his tea. Lost one of the pieces. And then I forgot the tea. Yeah. I had to run yeah, out of the room yeah, and yeah. go make it. So uh, welcome, welcome to Live Rush, everyone. Uh, my name is Ray Bonilla, and to my left, who are you, sir? I am Tyler Jacobson. I, f I might be echoing in Kate's mic. Okay, well then I'm just, I can hear myself echoing, but I'll, I'll, I'll get through it. Um, yeah, I'm Tyler Jacobson. I'm back to be working on little spaceman illustration and uh unseen but ever felt uh is the incredible omnipotent all-powerful kate welch hi everybody uh you might hear some muting and usually i am a little bit more pro i try to mute my microphone but everything is being held together by um spit rubber bands and fervent prayer in this live stream for some reason mm -hmm. technology is crumbling down around us so uh, everybody <laughs> just buckle in <laughs> oh god all right tyler what are we working on today so i'm back um i'm back here with my spaceman i think i'm gonna i'm gonna polish up these two that i that i left last week because uh, i like i like both of them and i haven't decided yet so maybe the chat can help me decide a sorry a or b anyways yeah well we'll, we'll see where we go i i like they they both have strengths to me um but what i wanted to do is um specifically show how i kind of go through doing this and that is um usually when i make an illustration i i kind of do these little thumbnails and i started with these very small like this. I just copied it again, so you can see. Um, and then I tend to pick one or two that I really like and continue noodling along on them. And eventually I'll um, get a good amount of, I mean, I'll get a good amount of detail and then I will sort of start getting reference for, for one of them. But I, I tend to work pretty far into it without getting a ton of reference. What are you working on, Ray? Uh, I am uh, working on a continuation of my uh, study here, my drawing. Um, and uh, yeah, I am uh, basically I where we last left off, uh, I did this, uh, I started a, a drawing where I had, uh, I used black and white uh, uh, or kind of like gray Prismacolor pencils, uh, these these guys right here, uh, and uh, added lights and darks to my scene. 
And so off camera, I did a little bit more. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and uh, continue to finish everything up and actually integrate uh, some acrylic uh, white paint on it. And so usually in the sort of the lighter areas and some uh, in the darker areas. And then uh, hopefully uh, get this bad boy signed. I said it. You gonna sign it? I said it. Wait a sec. You about to finish? I, I think oh, so. Oh, I might shoot. be close to it. I'm in, I'm in thumbnail phase. I'll never catch up. Wow, look at this turn of events. Hey, Tyler, I got a <laughs> poll going in the channel. So our live viewers are voting on whether they want you to see to to develop A or B. The casual straw poll seems to be pulling in favor of A, but I'll apprise you in two minutes of the result. Oh, okay. Um, a being this one, right? Correct, Mundo. If you want to yeah. draw a little A or a B next to those um, inside corners so people know what they're voting on. I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards that one as well, so I'm glad that the chat is of the same mind as me. A. Now, earlier, Photoshop decided to erase everything that I have, so let's see if it did that again with That's all my little, brushes. A little hyperbolic. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Everyone knows that computers are only as good as their users. That's true. They never make mistakes. <laughs> they fight. I fight for the user. <laughs> Draw. <laughs> no, I'll say it now. I, I love Tron Legacy. I'm saying it right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, On air, there's no, live. There's no, no reason to... Uh, to be embarrassed about that because I think it is an incredible sequel. Uh, I will tell you <laughs> that uh, it is probably like it is Godfather Two. That, that uh, it was what Godfather Two was to Godfather One, <laughs> uh, because I saw the original Tron recently, thinking like, let's rewatch it, you know, because uh, I got Disney Plus and I was like, all right, let's 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 do the whole thing. I want to get the whole story again. And the first one was uh, rough. <laughs> it has not aged well. Hey, Tyler, the poll, poll results are in. And I it says I... A, A is one. Oop, A is one. I, think... I think I muted you. Sorry, Kate. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I, did echo, just, I got a mysterious little notification that says the host is muted. I figured I like, the stream would be better if I just muted. Everything got better for Tyler. <laughs> I can I my it, my echo is definitely gone, which is nice. Okay. But um, a thumbnail okay. A. So we thumbnail can't. A. Well, I can't. How, how Jake can talk to you? me. Vis a vis. Okay. So so we got A though, right? We're going with A. Correct. Yeah, it looks. Like I don't know if the I don't know if the stream can hear you, but um, um, I have fixed the echo on my end, which. I, do I want? Do, can I even vote on this? No. I but can't. what do you think, Ray? What do you think? Are you gonna are you gonna B, override huh? the will of the people here? <laughs> I do have veto power on on live brush. I, I would know. think, right? That don't, is horse, don't the, don't that the is horse crap. Veto Those power are horse. That's horse apples. Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Am I, I know, still muted? Can Ray hear me protesting? Can Can you hear Kate protesting? No, no, no. I think, <laughs> she's, yeah, I think she's you're still silenced. muted. You, you've you, been silenced. You've been shadow banned on Zoom. I can't because then I'll ruin the whole live stream. All right, here we go. Wait, we'll try. Hold on. Ah, okay, just going okay, back in. Okay, okay. There we, we go. go. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> you don't have veto power. I said those are horse apples. Not allowed. Yeah. Horse <laughs> apples, Ray. Oh no. Oh no. I've minimized Tyler and now he's gone. Hold on. Excuse, excuse my French, everybody. Oh my gosh. Oh geez. Let's see. I ruined the stream. That's okay. This. Oh sweet. I rule the screen. Oh, welcome my God. welcome to the true live brush this is terrible it's gone this, the zoom is gone the zoom is gone all right uh everybody just just be cool for a second that's okay i'm gonna try and bring up a finished image really quick it'll okay. be photorealistic <laughs> there's another ray got that much okay there we go there we go oh there nice there we go. Hey, okay. all right fix it fix it it's fine oh yeah yep We're i see here. i see the other Holy ray shit. i see it on the delay it's we are, awesome we are professionals <laughs> Oh my gosh! I kind of I great. can take the blame on that too because I accidentally muted Kate and I didn't oh. mean to. Well, let's you know what? That's a why, why not leave it up to the audience? Yeah. Who, who's whose who's fault is it? 
Who's the, yeah? Let's throw. We it trusted yeah, them throw, before. I'll put a poll in the chat. In the meantime, we have a question from Aaron Rufino. Do you, hey, Aaron. Do you like to let some time pass between when you make a thumbnail and when you start the final to see it with fresh eyes? Oh yeah, totally. And I I looked at this this weekend because um, we kind of put a little banner together every time we're going to do a show. So I looked at this again this weekend and cleaned it up a little bit. But it was good to give it four or five days of not looking at it. Um, that it's so important on any piece of work you're working on to get fresh eyes. I, I tend to, um, I tend to get, I don't know what you call it, like snow blind or whatever, art blind um, often. So it's really good to just let something rest. So I tend to have a few pieces going at once most of the time. And that lets me just give everything a rest and, it's also, you can do this similarly by showing it to a small group of artists, perhaps, um, some art friends, um, and they'll give you some feedback. Ray and I do that. We kind of bounce stuff off each other. So um, in case you become really blinded to an image. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, sorry, I was just voting. I got got distracted here. Wait, yeah. you voting? You're in the chat voting? Uh, don't worry about it, man. Watch this. I'm gonna get in the chat too. It's gonna be no, crazy. No, oh no, God. no, no. Guys, we're 17 Hi. minutes in. Somebody do some art. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get there. There should be a, a. I'm trying to just like see if I can pop out the chat, but I don't know if I can. Well, you can. I thought. I thought I did. I thought I did do that. Before. Uh, anyway, right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get some that out. I will. Yeah, go, go get. Go station. get working, Tyler. So here's I'm the gonna... thing. Here's the thing. This I like this one that the the chat has chosen. A. Um, I'm with them on this. But I'm not really able to show that this is like a crazy alien in like 1960s spacesuit technology. So I need to kind of adjust the composition so that the forearms that I have them. He's supposed to have. Um, can be seen. Let me bring up the sketch from last week that I started with. Just if people didn't tune in last week, you can kind of see that I had this little doodle from my iPad. And that was what sort of led me on the road here. Here we go. Oh, voting, Ray? You can't be voting anymore. We've already decided. No, I can't even find the chat for some reason. I have no idea. It just like completely is gone. Dude, today's the technical it is difficulty. The weirdest Amazing. day. <laughs> it's we, like we suck. At this guy. We suck. <laughs> We've been doing good. We did good for one whole season. <laughs> I was killing it. What's causing Tyler the technical? Okay, I already did that poll already. All right, welcome to the chat room. Got it. Boom. Yeah, exactly. Chat Why settings. Does Boom. Pop chat out now. chat. Boom. Okay. Um, so you can see this is kind of my initial doodle, and I had this idea that it's a alien creature with like extremely different technology. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, anatomy is very different, and the suit itself is going to be reminiscent of like 1960s tech. I don't, I didn't deep dive too much into the world building on why, but it just seemed like a cool visual. But I want to try and emphasize these extra arms a bit more in this sketch. So I'll be doing some big changes. And you're just going to. Um, yeah, so I, well, what I'm going to finish. do is, I, well, I'm going to go in and actually try and get a little bit more, just a little bit more information in some of these areas here, because my intent is to actually work, uh, use this as an underpainting. Uh, for my for my paintings because uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get actually a really high res full full color actually scan of this whole thing to pick up all of the different types of grays and things like that and then I'm going to enlarge this and print it out and then mount it onto um, a board and I've actually this is actually a uh, an example of like a like a line drawing that I had done. And this, I actually did this for one of my classes. Um, uh, actually, uh, Aaron saw this. Um, 
and Aaron Rufino saw, saw me do this, but this is, um, so this is essentially it. So you can glue it onto any surface. In this case, it was just a piece of cardboard, but I usually have it on a piece of like cradled uh, panel board, basically. It's uh, 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 plywood cradled. So it means it has the sides on it. Uh, and then uh, once I, I do that with this stuff called matte medium, once I do that, it seals the surface and I can paint right on top of it. And the advantage of that is once I print it out, it's already drawn uh, and all of these uh, wonderful textures and things like that, all the values, oh, they all show up. Uh, and so um, it's a, uh, a really easy way to just to transfer my drawing and uh, still still have all of these values and use my study past, you know, as, as part of the final. And I think that's super important because uh, I just hate to waste uh, stuff. So I want to, I want to get to the finish as, as quickly as possible and um, allow me to do this uh, like this allows me to push the finish on my work uh, further and further and further. So, uh, and I'll do the same, you know, uh, for the, another piece that you'll actually see me uh, uh, well, I'll do this. I'll do a color comp basically. And depending on how much time we have, we, I'm actually might even do like a full on super study of this by bringing this into Photoshop and finishing off my color comp as a really super tight digital painting. So super um, study. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've been kind of messing around with the idea of, of taking, um, uh, my uh, comps and finishing them off. And um, how do I explain this? Uh, finishing them off and using them as my sole source of reference for a larger painting. Oh, so you're kind of leaning on the, the decisions you made in the comp as opposed to going back to a photo or um, any right. other reference you've collected. Right. Cause I change, I end up changing so much. Yeah. Yeah. Reference, you know, and, and like, I like the, the brush strokes that I get in a comp, like they might be super small, but like this, the full final finish of this painting is going to be 18 by 36. I got the panel for it and everything. Oh, cool. Uh, and you, and are you going to mount a drawing? Yeah. 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 So I'll mount, I'll mount the larger version of this. So, uh, to what I was uh, saying before, once I'm done with this comp, I can actually blow up the the uh this thing to 18 by 36 and then i'll have a larger version and again you know i'm off to the races and i don't have to redraw everything so um so uh that that's that's a really really great thing about this question earlier i think from everclay asking ray if this is a study from a photo and do you do photography also uh, yes, it is a study from a photo. I think this is, a, a, uh, but this composition is not from like the original photo. I think this is a combination of two photos. Uh, I do a lot of work to the, to, to the photograph, especially like value and um, uh, like arrangements. Uh, and so it's a, it, it started from a photo. I was really, I, I think it was maybe this, this group of people right here. And I was just taking photos of this area. It was it was much more like you could see it around um, the top and 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 the bottom, uh, but I cropped it because I really liked the idea of having it like a really long type of um, composition. Uh, and so uh, I did that. I cropped things, and then I saw I didn't like one of the original set of the group of figures, so I brought in another set which were from um, the same you know, vantage point, same angle and everything like that. Just people had moved and everything like that. So uh, I combine different things all the time. And, and we learned that stuff in, in school. Um, uh, just, you know, combining photo references and in order to create something that is your own and, is, and, and you're not tied down to the photograph, you know, which I think is super important that you just don't, um, aren't, aren't uh, don't let like the shortcomings of the photograph find its way into your painting. Um, so yeah, and some and I've, I've done the same, like where I've made so many changes to whatever photo reference I have that I'll often forget what I've changed. And if I have that original photo up, um, I'll start putting things back in that I took out. So yeah, I, I totally I'm with you on doing it that way, because it's, 
just so much easier to keep track of everything you've done. Isn't it weird to take a look at the original photo reference though? And you're like, you don't even, after you've made all of the, the adjustments and whatnot. Yeah. When I want to, I want to make all those, right? I mean, so do you, you, you don't want to just have a photograph. That's not the point. Your, your whole right. point is to create an original painting and you're emphasizing things and minimizing things. I mean, I think the key is that it's really good to take your own photos in these situations. Right. Oh um, yeah, absolutely. I remember, remember that like landscape class we had with Bill and I was doing some landscape painting of like a beach with like a tree. Um, it was like, I think it was near Monterey. There's this lone cypress kind of north of Monterey in California. And Bill was seeing me work on that. And he was like, oh, that that's looking good. And I was like, oh, wow, thanks. And then he said, did you take the photo? And then I, I was like, no. <laughs> and then he just hung his head and walked off. <laughs> I I don't remember that. No, oh man, I was like, where did you get the photo? Where did you get the photo from? Where did you get the the internet? (laughs) 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 So great. He was just like, this is looking, and then he was just immediately disappointed. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's a. you don't want to use somebody else's photo it's copyright and so um you know it's because it's their their property so you you know unless you have like permission and whatnot uh and so you know if it's a one-off you can i guess argue that but also you you're just using somebody else's artwork and if, if you're not making it your own so um yeah especially with landscapes like swiping yeah, stuff just, off the internet is a. It's so easy to find a cool image, but then you then it's someone else's. And yeah, it's cool because somebody money. else like spent the money to fly out there and. Yeah, and the is a professional the, probably. Yeah, so, um, so Tyler hates photographers. He doesn't respect them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great, great. Let's get that out there. You know what? The, uh, after today's shenanigans with our setup, might as well <laughs> might as well throw that in there too. Uh, you rocked it though. Well, this we is have like a little better view on this guy's arms. Yeah. Tyler, I don't know if we can hear your voice. I see. Did I get too far away? Yeah, I was just hearing it. Man, they um, I got a new mic. Everyone in the cone on it is tight it's a tight little code if i'm yeah. over if i'm over here you're probably losing me yeah amazing i can hear myself clear in the echo though which is great Uh, okay, so Chappy McChapman says, Ray, do you ever turn your paintings into apocalyptic scenes? I would like that. Uh, I, I have, I've done like, uh, taken photography of things and done, uh, you know, for like illustration stuff, you know, and, uh, have, have made like kind of chaotic scenes, uh, and, and whatnot, uh, for something like that. I think that's, um, that's a lot of fun to do, um, especially bringing in elements and kind of like what, what Tyler, uh, is, is doing and, um, like really started, but that usually that's a different type of working method. And what I mean by what Tyler's doing is like, I would start with like a, a, a thumbnail like that and try and develop it as far as possible to see where my, uh, my imagination would take me, you know, and then I would create reference, build reference to help me execute that. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, I think, I think what Chapman McChapman wants is for you to drop in some zombies there in the, right. (laughs) Kind of approaching Uh, these people waiting for the, (laughs) wait for the Metro. (laughs) It is the, uh, the L in Chicago. Yeah. Shout out to people from Chicago. F and H I if you're from Chicago. Hey, do we have any Chicago people out there? 
I don't know. I don't see any apps, so. I don't know apps. And there's a terrific question from Boyfruit who asks, do the guys have any tricks for how you then go by generating reference, especially for something you maybe couldn't photograph because it's something fantastic? Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. um, a great question. I personally love making a lot of stuff up, um, but I look at, I usually have a big giant reference board of, of, you know, let's say it's a creature. I'll have a huge reference board of all the creatures that sort of inspire this design so that I can see what the skin's like. Um, maybe I like the wings of a particular kind of creature. Usually it's like, if I'm doing a dragon or something, it's like a big fruit bat. Um, those wings are amazing. The I forget where they are. I want to say somewhere in India. Um, they're like called flying foxes. Uh, but then if, if, if it's scaly, I'll have lots of different kinds of scales so I can see um, color variety and textures. So I usually have a giant board just full of that stuff as inspiration. And then if it's if it gets really complicated and you need good lighting, um, there's a lot of digital tools I'll use, um, whether it's ZBrush for sculpting something or SketchUp for like hard surfaces or Blender. You can build a lot of that stuff out so that you have something um, that, that has really accurate shadows and um, better shapes. And that's really fun stuff to explore if you haven't messed with it yet. You can get free trials, I think, on most of that stuff. Dude, that's the that's it right there, man. I think that's like that's where it's at. Building building your stuff, like building my cats digitally or just building it just in general. I, I find that so much fun, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't done it in a while, but it's something I really want to get Ditto. back to. Do. Um I think that's that's the thing, like I think fully realizing it in three dimensions is, you know, it, it, it likes to, that, that's one of the things that I like personally to do is I'll do like a thumbnail, but I won't be um, tied down necessarily to it just because for me, the, the reference uh, process, and this is kind of like where Tyler and I have different approaches in a sense like I really like the photo reference process and I like working with models and really getting involved with things and like getting exactly what I want out of it but trying different things like that whereas like Tyler you're you're not necessarily that that's the case right because uh right I don't I mean I have gotten models referenced before in the past but I tend to I tend to rely on whatever my initial drawing was and then i'll right. get pretty tight reference for like the head and hands specifically just because those are um those can be really time consuming so i i tend to lean on reference for those just because it, it gets them across pretty quick and plus and, i think uh sorry yeah. go ahead no, okay. um i i think also like it also depends on the type of work that you do, right? So like, yeah, if it were fantastical, I 100% would actually approach it much differently than it was if it was something like based on like a time piece, like timely piece, like a, something based on the 50, something based off of just like regular, ordinary things, nothing that's uh, that can't be photographed, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, especially if it's, you know, if it's cars and right, kinds right. of um, complex machinery, it's really great to get super strong reference for that kind of stuff. And it's all about how you work too. Um, I, I will, I get lots of reference, but I don't stick to it too tightly because I find my work gets really stiff when I do so. So, and it's, and if that's not a problem for you, then that's just um, how you work. It's, it's just yeah. my own personal, um, approach to reference collection it, it it that's that's like that's totally that's a uh that's hard you know that's something that you have to be careful with like if you're really good at getting if you like reference you know and once you have it it's it's really important that you don't completely handcuff yourself to it you know yeah. and as much as i it. yeah as much as i love like working with models getting everything i want i will basically use the model as like a like a paper doll in a sense and like enlarge the hands maybe shrink the head or or you know exaggerate certain features to get what i need uh out of things because 
I, I don't want to be at the whim of the camera's distortion, you know, or the you know, or what the lens can and cannot take. And so, you know, I'll get um, a I'll shoot when I shoot a uh, and this is something you know you can try out too uh, if you're if we're shooting, you know, photographing uh, someone else or just photographing model, photographing yourself, you know, you don't have to necessarily get everything all in one pose, right? So you can get like, let's say you get the body where you want it. Um, you can try completely different hands if you want it, or completely different arms. And then just go through all of your photos and pick and choose. Oh, I like the as long as the angle is the right, the same, and the is your perspective is consistent, the lighting is consistent, you could do anything you want. And so there are many times I've, you know, um, taken like, I remember I was doing stuff for the New Yorker uh, and, uh, and I had to do like portraits of people, but I only had, at, you know, and I had to show their full body, even though in all the reference I have was just their head. And so I get people to pose uh, for me uh, to do that, you know, uh, and then I swap out different parts uh, of their body parts uh, and you know, f you know, uh, figure out or, or come up with a unique image like that, you know, so it, it's just there as a launch point. It doesn't, it's not the end all be all. Um, and I think that's, uh, and, and I think that even applies, to, especially applies to for, um, you know, gallery painting as well. You know, it's just not like, I'm not completely copying this exactly the way I shot it either. And, uh, um, yeah, Everquate says Frankenstein's illustration. I like it. Yeah, so Everquate, it's actually called when 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 you do that, when you sort of cut in different types of like, oh, I got a head here, a hand from there, and all this stuff. It's actually one of the, uh, it's actually called Frankensteining. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've done it a lot because yeah, mean, it's like you were saying with like sometimes you have a great hand or a great pose, but it you know maybe you were too close, you know, like right, so now right. there's an extreme amount of um. Uh, perspective being forced on it and so you've got to change a bunch of the sizes so because you still like the shapes but you know the hand's too big so you got to move the hand smaller because it's too close to the camera lens and um, those are all little things you can play with if you like little aspects of a piece of reference and that's the thing like with this a lot of times with landscapes like this i'll often <laughs> if i find that like this doesn't represent something that I uh, really kind of felt at the time or like what I remembered it as I will, uh, I'll go in and, and completely. And that's what I did for a lot of these builds. There was all a bunch of stuff off, off like the top and everything like that, that I don't remember seeing. It was just what the camera caught. So I, I don't paint it. I, I completely killed it. Uh, but there are times where I'll take like a, a building or something and I'll, or parts of buildings and blow them up, you know, or, or zoom in on them. Uh, and and sort of maybe cut down on some of like the the atmospheric uh, or just some of the perspective it's going back if I don't like the fact that it's too small um, and so that is totally you know totally something that is done often there's a lot of I remember like our teacher Xiao Ming Wu would do that all the time in landscape uh, painting like he was, he's an incredible landscape painting artist how many people really know that I mean um, yeah. they know him for mostly his his figurative work what did you say Tyler yeah, I mean, he kind of, even in a lot of his books, he like sneaks the um, landscapes into the back. And you're like, Dude, they're, on, and they're man. so, they're so good. They're so yeah. good, you know? He's just like on another level, but like he'll just completely redo things, you know, uh, well, and shift I mean, things and, around. Yeah, he just changes everything. He, he's not like we would have model, you know, figure painting model classes with him and he would just change everything. You'd, you'd look over and this amazing painting would be there. And then you look up at the model and it's almost nothing the like, like he right, was, right. he was just using it as a touchstone essentially to build an image. Yeah. I think that's the, uh, that's the thing. Like even, even in, in work where, um, even in, in, in work where we, you know, in, in figure drawing classes, we were encouraged to, to change the model in, in, in for the sake of improving the, the design. And so uh, I think that's, that's important to note too. Like I remember I was in a, um, uh, I used to take these workshops with this great teacher at the Academy of Art. His name was Bill Sanchez. 
and he oh, would yeah, like he'd go over you know he would have a model post in 20 minutes and then he'd go over and he'd come around and 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 talk talk to you and stuff and if the hand was just if you were at a weird angle or something and the hand just didn't work he would yell at you if you copied it it's like why would you even bother drawing that hand it doesn't even look like <laughs> a hand it's poorly designed change the hand you know uh That's not and what sounded like yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> He would yell a lot, not like angrily, yeah, he, but he talked very loud. Yeah. You got to practice. Yeah, yeah. He was just like. But he, you know, as as an illustration skills, he had some great, I mean, constant amazing ideas about, you know, even if, even like changing the facial features of models was a big thing. Like right. he would come around and just start drawing over your drawing or whatever and and make the model like a completely different, skin tone like completely different kind of hair because he's like this is just landmarks sometimes in illustration you're going to be asked to change everything and it, we saw that with um thomas blackshear where he'd just kind of photograph a model and then he would you know turn them into a native american or something like he completely was, he yeah. Just, yeah he would use your knowledge of of all these different things to to make an illustration hey uh we just got rated by steve sketches hey steve sketches thanks for coming Whoa. over Nice. Welcome, 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 welcome to Live Brush with Ray Bonilla and Kate Welch. <laughs> and me, me, me. That doesn't make sense to newcomers, but it will. It will. It will. It will. Yeah. It will. That's okay. They'll they'll get it. They'll get it. They'll get it. I gotta indo indoctrinate them. You know what I mean? Like, but the chat, chat, the chat will handle it. You know. Yeah, well, I mean, we got to make some. Uh, yeah. So if you're just joining us, is if you're just joining us, we are doing. This is uh, the second episode in our uh, series called "From the Ground Up," and um, Tyler and I are actually making uh, pieces that, um, you know, real pieces. Th you know, these aren't like demonstrations in the sense that that we are demonstrating stuff. But this is stuff like, for instance, like I'm going to use for my gallery work. Uh, and we're actually taking you through the entire journey of how we come up with a, a piece and carry it to a finished painting. And um, ultimately, Tyler and I are going to be doing oil paintings, you know, of these images. Yeah. So uh, I'm doing a uh, uh, basically a, a study, of, which is essentially uh, laying in all my values using a mixed media process of Prismacolor pencils and uh some acrylics and tyler's doing um what are you doing tyler um i'm working digitally as i mean i think when we began this whole ground up thing we kind of wanted to emphasize like how our true process is and i always start out digitally on almost everything so i wanted people to see that and i use this really chalky canvasy texture brush just for loose looseness and it gets some cool marks um so i'm still noodling on this guy i'll probably get it to a point where i want to proceed to a tight drawing um after this episode right so aaron funes uh yeah, oh, yeah. i was gonna read the, i was gonna read it oh, i'm sorry oh, kate quit trying to steal my job is there a i way... just figured out how to do the pop-up chat is there, is there a way you think about editing out information are your decisions based around the focal point or visual hierarchy? Thank you, Aaron Rufino. That's a great question, Aaron. Um, the answer is absolutely yes. So everything's based off of not, you know, if it doesn't help the uh, uh, the image, then it gets taken out. Uh, and uh, like, I'll give you an actual uh, example. There's There was a bunch of stuff right in here. Uh, and I edited it out uh, and I'll edit out a whole bunch of like different types of like superfluous details. I do these studies so I can figure out whether or not I want to edit out things. Uh, you know, one thing that's, that's bothering me right now is this like uh, little window here. And I got to ask myself, is that worth it being there? You know, cause right now it's kind of touching the, uh, the head of this figure here and see if I can maybe clarify that. Will that actually make it better? Hmm, I'm not sure, you know? And so what I'll do is I'll play around with, you know, why don't I actually, let's do this now on this. Cause I think I'll, 
I think I'm gonna take this out. Oh man, are you about to make a mistake? Dude, I don't make mistakes. Okay. He says this is, okay, well Ray doesn't make mistakes, but I was actually about I'm, to warn the chat. I'm Ray that, yeah. I don't make mistakes. <laughs> I was about to warn the chat. I might screw this up. I'm gonna try not to, but I might get to a point where I'm like, I hate this sketch. I don't want to use it. I'm yeah, gonna, that's true. I'm gonna throw it out. That's true. You do say that a lot. I don't. I mean <laughs> Ray doesn't make mistakes. I don't make mistakes. I lease it. I lease it. Um, oh, we haven't talked about any movies in this one. You guys, this is a common feature in Live Brush. Yeah, Talking Live Brush is actually mostly movie talk. I would say, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Tyler? I would say 85, 15. Yeah, five percent movie talk, fifteen percent art. Yeah, we might change the title to like I don't know, film brush. No, no, live brush is where you <laughs> brush up on your film, on your current film. <laughs> all right, live. all right, fine. That what are you doing, ruining the show for? <laughs> Dude, this is why I never this introduce is, you. I'm getting kicked off this show, anyways. We have this. <laughs> I'm out. Sauceware says, I asked a, I tried once tried to ask a question about art and they banned me because I wasn't asking a question about the Masters of the Universe movie. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. true, Sauceware. In fact, that was, why are you uh, still here? Why are you still here, yeah. Sauceware? No, yeah, no, no. No, I'll so, we, no, no. We, <laughs> everyone has, can get a second, third, or fourth chance, you know. Yeah. So, well, but, but um, after the fourth. So, Sauceware, so. if you would like to share your thoughts on, uh, Masters of the Universe, we are all ears. We are uh, not. Is, we um, are zero ears. Hey, speaking of movies, Monkey House wants to know, can you share one movie you love that people wouldn't necessarily expect? Yeah, so uh, there's this little movie uh, hmm. called... Oh yeah. Go ahead. What do you think I'm going to say, Tyler? Huh? <laughs> what do you think I'm going to say? I'm going to get you, sucker. That's what you're going to say. Oh, <laughs> wow. That's a really good movie. Can, okay. Okay. <laughs> Can I tell you, I actually, I grew up watching that movie, like, all the Me time. Me too, I love it. Like, my dad, maybe I shouldn't be impl impl implicating him on this, but he had a, he would get bootleg movies all the time from, like, this guy that had, you know, would sell VHS tapes of, of bootleg movies outside of, yeah, like, Batman, maybe. That you know, was job. No, Batman was legit. It was legit. Oh, Batman was legit. Okay. Yeah, it was legit. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna get you sucker was one of them, and it was uh, vice versa, was the other one. Do you oh. remember vice versa? No. Oh, that. Yeah, uh, and then Rambo three. <laughs> <laughs> the, you mean so, the best of the Rambo movies? Yeah. <laughs> that was it. That was like on rotation for a while. That was like the rotation that I had. Oh no, I'm sorry. And Return of the Jedi. That was the last oh, one. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so I watched those religiously. So, but I'm gonna get you a second. It's like, uh, how how what can I equate it to? It is amazing. It is amazing. It is key, uh, the Wayne's family essentially their movie, right? It's like if a comedic family made a movie. Yeah, which they did. Which they did. Um, but but this wasn't the movie you were gonna bring up. No, I think I would. From the I question, did. you were gonna, nope. you were gonna nope. say I'm nope. gonna that was my, that was my answer. That was my answer. What do you mean I was gonna say if I just what was said the other one though? I'm gonna get you. Uh, I vice versa or Rambo three. Oh, 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 okay. I thought you were saying those are other bootleg ones your dad picked up. The yes and yes, it's yes to those both of them. <laughs> what about that? Um, <laughs> I gave Ray this VHS in art school because I thought Ultraman was in it. Oh um, my god. <laughs> It's a Godzilla movie. It's it was a VHS worst. I got for a birthday. No, no, yeah, it was no. Godzilla you... versus Megalon. No, you see, we're burying the. So for weeks, Tyler told me. So I was like, I remember catching Ultraman, mm -hmm. the the English version of it, and which was actually made in Australia, which oh, is really? wild. Yeah, and um, it was really shortly lived. I, I didn't realize that it was uh, Ultraman battle or towards the future or something like that and uh i always loved that as a kid I, I but it was always in weird times on sunday it was like really early and i remember catching it 
uh, here and there and just being blown away. And then realizing later on, like when I was uh, in, in grad school, um, that Ultraman was, I knew Ultraman was a thing, but you know, I started to watch Ultraman, like, oh, and just get into it. And I just loved it. I loved the design and everything like that. The first well, Ultraman. Weren't we gushing and, a little bit over those um, Alex Ross Ultraman images? Right. And then Alex time. Ross did those Ultraman covers and you were like, oh man, it's like, do you ever seen like Ultraman versus Godzilla? And I was like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, man. Like I used to watch that all the time. It's like, I'm like, do you still have it? He goes, yeah, I think it's on VHS. And I'm like, I have a VHS player. I have a VHS player. I love that. And, I love the do you still have it though? Because it was totally a test. Because he's like, this is bullshit. There's never been anything <laughs> like this. <laughs> so for weeks, weeks, Tyler would come back in this class and I'm like, oh, did you manage to to bring? He's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. Forgot, forgot, forgot. And he always forget it for weeks. It was real, though. And then one week, he finally had it. He got it and he handed <laughs> it to me. And I looked at it and the 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 box had said when he pulled out the the tape it said happy birthday tyler 1987 <laughs> and i popped this thing in and i was like instantly something felt wrong oh yeah and it, granted this is this is godzilla versus mechalon this is the movie you can find it <sighs> not ultraman <laughs> it is not ultraman and i and i was watching it and i was like well, what is going on and then like and like as I fast forwarded it, I was like, maybe the fights to the end. And then, then I never saw Ultraman. And so, you got to forgive me though, because this is no. 1987 or 88, and there is a guy in the movie who like does a hand gesture thing, kind of like Ultraman. Okay, there's there is a fun fact from Saucefire in the chat that might address this. Actually, there was a contest to make a new Godzilla character, and someone submitted an Ultraman ripoff called Red Alone which they renamed Jet Jaguar. It was supposed to be Jet Jaguar versus Whoa. Megalon, but they didn't think Jet Jaguar could carry a movie, so they added in Godzilla at the last minute. Holy oh smokes. my god. <laughs> so so Jet Jaguar you have clarified rip our off history. Ultraman that duped this duped a, a 3-year-old a, a 4-year-old Tyler <laughs> or a 5-year-old. How old Here's the you? thing. Like, when I was in 1988 because I think it's in it was 87. Happy birthday, Tyler, 1987. I was young. I was I was born in 82, so do no, the math. but you know what? Um, you were you were old enough to know better. Old. And you, you, I know you were you understood you were old enough to understand the uh the concept of subterfuge and lying <laughs> to good friends. Are you kidding me? I did not. I did not know that you weren't supposed to lie. I lied all the time. I was a little liar. I love I love that that little tidbit from sauce so yeah that, that was amazing that, that said it it's thank you you you've you've actually resolved an age-old dispute on this yeah see so and but in a way i was kind of right it was ultraman no you weren't <laughs> i totally was kind of right no unbelievable <laughs> oh man that's so you know that's so funny though because you know they were doing that all the time in those types of movies. Oh, yeah. They're like, I mean, that's where Transformers you know. came from was bashing together different toys and I mean it was happening everywhere in the eighties. Um wasn't uh now I heard of like a tale that even though I can't find evidence of it that He Man was actually originally they thought of actually doing a uh a toy line for Conan. Oh. And then realized it was too violent because <laughs> they actually read it. <laughs> they were like, like oh, what? Conan, no, we just... can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> so they did that Toys That Made Us um, show on Netflix. And I, I think there's one about He Man, but I can't remember. All I remember is that they were trying to market it with a comic book in the box. Oh, man. That's like, oh, yeah. See? Boyfruit says yes. He man was originally a tie-in for Conan. Boom. Oh, there you go, Ray. Oh, what's up? Oh yeah. I yeah, just yeah. pulled it up. I I had to violate Ray's screen space quite a bit. Sorry about that, everybody. But I have Monkey House's question: Is criticism easier to handle with maturity, or does it still land as hard as it did when you were a student? I wanted to save that because it's a great question. That's so great wait, question. Uh, repeat the question again. Sorry. 
Is criticism easier to handle with maturity or does it still land as hard as it did when you were a student? Um, I would say in a way of, I guess, to go with it's easier to handle with maturity in that it's easier to handle with volume. So like the more, the more criticism you receive, um, the more feedback you go, feedback loops you go through. Um, I think the the easier it gets to take, but it also sort of, um, I guess, trains your ego to not, I mean, it's the same way, I guess, and easier to take. It trains your ego to not really take it personally, that, that it is about trying to make a better piece of art. And the more you get good feedback like that, that helps make a better painting, the, the more you start to realize like, oh, I can easily become blind to the painting like we were talking about earlier. Totally. So yeah, it's all about repetition, just like anything. Like it's you get good at drawing by repetition, you get good at painting by repetition, you get good at dealing with feedback by repetition. Yeah, and you know it's yeah, I think ha having that uh, insight though, like the idea that it is like cr criticism and feedback isn't about an assault on your character when, when you realize that it is just you know, especially if you're around, it also it's criticism. It also depends on where it's coming from, right? But if you're in a uh, in a situation where the people that are giving you feedback on your artwork, uh, it you know, are trying to make it better, then you know, it's it's much easier to you, you're just going to take it for what it is. It's not an assault on your character. It's just what let's all try and make this artwork uh, uh, better. And I remember there was a uh a uh one of the like i love the film the incredibles and i love brad bird uh, as a as an animation director the like iron giant and you know uh i even liked his mission impossible i'll say it i love his mission impossible yeah i thought it was good um it's not as good as iron giant but um so you know he he was it, it was i think it was a documentary for the behind the scenes for the incredibles and he was saying you know, you had all these like great animators and great artists that are just absolutely incredible, some of the best in the world working on this film. And he was, they were talking about criticism and, and, and he was very known, like the culture that he brought into Pixar was uh, very much a, it was very much like a non, like very straight to the point. And it, it could be viewed as very abrasive. And so he had recommended to his artists uh, that like, to like, don't, don't take it personally. It's like the best thing to do is when you're in a critique like this and people are just, you know, all throwing in and chiming in what you should change and what you should improve on and all this stuff. Don't edit at that point, right? Because uh, you're not in the right headspace because you just spent all week working on something. Now you're being told that you're gonna have to redo a bunch of it, right? Or potentially redo a bunch of it. Um, so just think that you're just trying, everyone's trying to make it better. And so what you do at that time is you just write everything down, whether or not you agree with it. Uh, and then once you're done, then take that criticism, look at it when you have it, you know, when your mind is clear and you could focus on stuff uh, and then make your decision there. You know, that takes maturity. Um, and knowing also that like, you really ultimately want to get better, you know? So the answer is yes, it, 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 it does, it, it, uh, it does, uh, it is a lot easier to stomach, at, you know, uh, when you are, when you're much, you know, uh, older, but again, it depends on the, also the situation, like Tyler's like dealing with like intellectual property and stuff. And so, um, you know, like, like Everquate says, like, is there a way to gauge, oh, like quote, oh, that's actually good input versus, oh, no, you're just a wrong without, uh, oh, no, no, you're just wrong without giving into the ego, right? And so like, uh, yeah, I love Ray when answers my questions, I hear you, yep, I am, I am part psychic. Um, so I, this is, this is why Kate and I run this show. This, this um, is why, so this is why Kate and Ray's show is so good. Yeah. <laughs> See, by the way, Steve, Steve's, uh, Steve's sketches is like probably like what is is it like remember like Justin when Justin Gerard came like and watched the show <laughs> they were like just the amount of confusion you know it's like uh what you know 
so yeah so i uh you know it's yeah what, what were you gonna say tyler well i was gonna say that um it is like you were saying it's it has to do with different scenarios so feedback like in a pixar scenario is you, you know you you have to change those things that are made based on the decisions of the team um but you know if you're doing a personal piece or a personal illustration you get feedback from a group and you don't necessarily have to take it all um you can kind of edit you know pick the things that you think are useful to the illustration because ultimately it's still your piece um so in that scenario you don't you're not bound to the feedback um you kind of want to see what's going to be helpful and then move with it right but there's also you know if you're in that kind of scenario where maybe you're in a crit group or you're in art school there's like this social contract that you're going to put your image up and it is going to be judged by everybody um i remember there were a lot of scenarios when we were in art school where a lot of people took it so personally but you know if i'm not saying like oh don't take it personally you are going to take it personally but you're, you're also like there to you're expecting to be criticized right um, so there is a certain amount of like you kind of have to um be ready if, if you know if you don't want your image judged in that kind of scenario then just don't put up an image yeah you know and you know art school a lot of people with egos and yeah some just, people just you know really kind stuff. of like uh you know, it's like Quincy Jones said that an ego is a really just a a a, a, a really a, a, an insecurity that's dressed up. You know, uh, sure. And um, you know, it's you learn how to weather that stuff. Hey. Question from Nick Deluca ninety six. What's up, Nick? Nick says i'm working on bettering my line art skills and studying several artists are there any that you guys recommend to look up and study from and the megazord is a better design than ultraman no competition i don't think anybody's oh going to argue with, their, with you there I think what are, i think this is a megazord household one, one might mistake, mistake versus ultraman for ultraman because it's so good um Bernie Wrightson. Look at Bernie Wrightson. No, why why even bother? Don't, don't answer his question if he's just going to come at us <laughs> like that. spell Wrightson? I'm sorry, this is yeah, a test. Yeah, it's but... U-L-T-R-A-M-A-N. Bernie Ultraman. <laughs> it, uh, Bernie Wrightson is with a W. Um, W-R-I-G-H-T-S-O-N. Is that right? Yeah. Um, he did one of my favorite pieces or collections of illustrations ever. Easily in my top five of illustration work it is um, he did a fully illustrated version of Frankenstein, and it is bananas. Uh, Dark Horse currently has a, a published version of it you can pick up. It's beautiful black like cloth bound book, but it is jam packed full of absolutely insane pen and ink illustration work. And he did what all in the seventies when he was in the studio with. Um... Was that done in the seventies? I I think it was in the seventies. Maybe he finished it in the early eighties, but I think some of those early drawings from the studio were in the seventies. Yeah. Um, Back with um, when he was in the studio with uh, Jeff who Jones. Was he, with? he was with yeah, Captain Jeff, Jeff Jones. Jones, Mike Kaluta. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> um oh my yeah. god another great book to pick up um but yeah. who else is good at line work i was always a big fan of oh what was the other guy who was doing spawn after todd uh uh Kapula? greg capullo capullo that's it i, yeah, I love his line work whoa we got whoa piper shadow with the oh, two two photos one, how many? How many of these uh, gifted five oh, tier wow. one subs? Whoa. Wow! Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Piper. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, so that means that there's Bad. some. That, no, that's an that's that is in response to my Ultraman uh, stance that I took with <laughs> Nick. Uh, Great, great. 
Okay, I will um, tell you that so saying else, you don't like Ultraman you is is like, and you're like, over the Megazoid is like saying like, you know, you think in, <laughs> you think Space Odyssey, 2001 a Space Odyssey is super lame because Interstellar is way better. <laughs> you That's see where fair. we're at here, Nick? That's fair. Do you see wow. where we're at? See where we're at, Nick. You're not going to get an answer about the line work. <laughs> hey, uh, guys. There's another question. You took too long yeah. dunking on the Megazord. From Agavazi, <laughs> what are some of the things that inspire you to make a piece? Seeing something in nature, reading a good book or poem, hearing an awesome song, etc. cetera. Oh, that's a great question. Okay. Um, do you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So as long as you're not gonna it could be a couple time. it could be a whole bunch of things. Uh, a lot of times uh, it is just a, uh, a moment, you know, uh, usually I am at this point where, uh, as an artist, I'm, I like to, I can always keep myself, uh, open in, in terms of being aware of my surroundings, you know, uh, and it is like, um, it's like a, an old teacher of mine's in high school. I remember it was a psychology uh, professor and he had said for our first homework assignment, um, his assignment was to look up, you know, to actually just look up at the world. Like, don't, don't uh, bury your head down in like your book or like, you know, your CD player. I know I'm, I'm dating myself, but um, <laughs> no, I'm not as old as you, Tyler. So, um, <laughs> and, you know, with an artist, as an artist, you have to, you know, you have to be like that. You have to be like a constantly looking at things, constantly just being in awe of like the, the world. Um, now artists also, uh, influence me, uh, you know, and inspire me to do work too. And, and in the fact that it makes me like the emotional response I get from their work makes me want to do the same with my work. Um, and it's like a two, uh, so I'm going to, uh, two uh, answer two questions, uh, two separate questions with that. Um, so like someone like Al Williamson, who Nick, you should t take a look at the great Al Williamson, like comic book artists like that, like, or Gene Colan, like um, Nick, Gene Colan, Tom Palmer, Tomb of Dracula. You should check that out. Um, you know, just seeing that just, you know, it, or it could be painters. It could be like uh, Andrew Wyeth. It could be, you know, other illustrators, you know, Dean Cornwell, or, you know, you just go down the line uh, and, so that, you know, that could be inspiring to me uh, as well, or movies too. Like, I mean, that's why Tyler and I talk about movies so, so often is because we're, we're always, you know, influenced by them because they're just, it's just a visual world, you know? And, and, and when you, when you see a, a, an artist, a fellow visual storyteller working at a high level, man, it, it can't be anything but inspiring. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's super influenced by Blade Runner, you know, uh, really Scott's Blade Runner and, you know, just love, you know, I, I, I'm, that's, that's, you know, influenced my work just as much as anyone else, you know, like you'll see like really Scott does this type of like lighting all the time where it's like a little piece of light hitting something uh, and in a scene and he does it like even more subtly. And I love that his use of light, um, which makes sense. Yeah, that I, he's, forget, <clears throat> I forget the DP that was, is cinematographer on Blade Runner, but I think he worked with that same guy in Duelist and Legend and Alien. I could be totally wrong, but um, he's got this eye for for lighting. That have you have you seen the Duelist? It's like, dude, no, you know, I saw you you had told me about it, and I've heard about it, of course, but you had told me uh, when we were talking about realistic sword fights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the sword fights are good in it, but. And Every I watched the sword of fight, the movie but is like yeah, a, is a classical painting. It's crazy, dude. I got, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta watch that movie. That's all right. Yeah, Ultraman's in it too, so you'll love it. What really? Are you sure? <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> it might be freaking Jet Jaguar. No offense to Jet Jaguar, but it's just <laughs> oh, these art competitions, Ultraman that somebody probably just traced off of. Wow. <laughs> Hey, we got rated again by Izzy Medrano and Whoa. crew. Thanks, Izzy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Welcome. Welcome to Live Brush. 
Okay. Uh, my name everyone. is Ray Bonilla, and uh, I have I have special guests every uh, stream. Uh, one of them is uh, <laughs> a long time uh, uh, guest, Kate Welch, who you don't see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here a lot. Great. It's really great to be here. <laughs> I'm glad you could be here. I so, show up to my left is, is Tyler Jacobson, whom uh, has been uh, you know. I, w I wonder. I wonder who uh, you, you probably got a lot of. You got a lot of fans here, so probably the people that were rating us was probably fans of you, Tyler. Oh man, turn that around. Whew. You saw that? I'm expecting to to be real cutting. But... Hey, can well, yeah? I... Can this be our new vibe in twenty twenty one that we like say nice things to each other? This is the, I like that so much better. Tyler, I said Maybe. Tyler was dressed up, right? Yeah, somebody somebody <laughs> in the avidity in the chat said Tyler was looking hot as hell. Oh right, all Thank dressed you. up sharp. Yeah, I know. I like, um, I don't know, I really like collared shirts, and we'll have to talk, Francisco and I were talking about this last time, right? We both kind of dig these collared shirts where it's kind of cut back. I, I forget what this is called, like a French collar or something like that, but um, that's the last bit of uh, collared shirt talk <laughs> we're going to have on the, on the show. <laughs> um, it's crickets out there. Live brush. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, speaking of that, yeah, um, we should do sort of an intro that is like an old VHS '80s kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know everyone does it, but we should do it no, at least once. Twice. Everyone, no, everyone hasn't done it. We haven't done it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. We'll get Let's Ridley. We'll get Ridley on it. Yeah, we'll get Ridley. You know, I I don't want to say this. No, I will say it. I haven't really been a fan of Ridley Scott movies since Kingdom of Heaven. You know, you were telling me to so okay, full disclosure, Tyler has a lot to do with my two people really, two main people. Tyler and our friend Eric Johnson have a lot to do with my my movie education, right? And so usually if it's a movie from the 80s and if Tyler or Eric haven't shown me it, I probably haven't seen it. Uh, so regardless, so that's why we, we talk about a lot. We, because we, we have a, a similar, really close taste in movies, uh, except for like some big, big issues, um, just in science fiction, but I, we won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> kingdom of heaven, you had told me, I, so I watched it. It's incredible, of course, but the edit, the director's cut, you were telling me to watch, right? Yeah. Director's cuts are really good. Is, is it's way better. Then, uh, I'd say it is a far superior movie. And it's just little teeny things too. But it's good. It's it's I wouldn't even say that Kingdom of Heaven is like a really great story or even film in the end, but visually it's just so good. It's well worth anyone's time to check out. Yeah. But I mean, after that, I mean, aside from the Martian, which he didn't really have to do much because the material he was working with was amazing. Hey, Tyler, um, you're, you're, I'm getting an epic e echo. From oh, yeah. Why. See, I'm, I've been having echoes like crazy. This is like super epic. I don't know why. I think what happened is that for some reason, Zoom has changed my microphone in Zoom by itself uh, because that's the kind of haunted bullshit I'm dealing with. Um, but, the listeners should not be getting an echo, so you're oh, just sweet. both okay, going to cool. have to move along with the echo. Sorry yeah, about that's that. That's fine. That's good. I would that's open good. Zoom and fix it, but it will break no, everything. No, no, no. Don't, don't, okay. don't, don't touch anything. Kate is 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 yeah. keeping this ship together on that's the motto. A motto yeah. of 2021 is don't touch anything. Just everybody. don't touch anything, Kate. <laughs> We're sorry we messed it up. There's a uh, there is a great question. Uh, I would love to hear more of your thoughts about Ridley Scott after you answer this wonderful question from okay. Aaron Rufino. Do Aaron. you ever struggle to illustrate something you're really passionate about? How do you get past the worry that you won't be able to do the subject matter justice, Tyler? Holy shit! How, how the hell? Great. How the hell do you know exactly <laughs> what's going on in my mind, Aaron Rufino? I was literally gonna just punt that thing right to you. Um, wow, this is something Kate and I have talked about a million times. There's a there's um there's some subject matter that's really near and dear to me that I still am afraid to touch. Um 
how do I deal with this? I still haven't touched it, so I guess I haven't dealt with it. I haven't <laughs> with it. Um, I think that I mean I have touched it a little bit. I guess certain aspects of uh, what I'm talking about is like a Lord of the Rings material is really near and dear to me, and I have been almost afraid to tackle it. Um, but I have tackled it a little bit lately. I have I showed Ray a sketch which you guys haven't seen yet, but I'll, I'll throw it into. Um, probably when we're done with this set of episodes, I think I'll start on that piece and just make myself do it. You're gonna but, um, do it? Yeah. I think so. Yes. Oh, so you listen. So, okay. Yes. So you gotta... this is how you get. This is how you get past it, Aaron. You just do it. Just do it. Nike. Soon to be a sponsor. <laughs> we soon to be a that sponsor. That would be a weird sponsor choice for this incredibly unathletic podcast. Yeah, but we would be rolling <laughs> if we were. <laughs> So we wouldn't um, care. You think... oh, we have to figure I out guess... how to re reorganize these cameras so your shoes are always in the shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll have another camera right next to our little windows that's just our feet. Because <laughs> I'm totally not just wearing Christmas socks or something right now. Um, but I guess my best advice on that would be is, um, this is back to Aaron's question, yeah, is to just trust your own vision on on this thing. Don't don't worry about like, oh, it's not going to look as good as Peter Jackson and Rich Taylor's version of Lord of the Rings, or or, or the the blessed and saintly Ralph Bakshi Lord of the Rings. Um, <laughs> Come on, man, you gotta leave Ralph out of it. Leave no, him. Out of it. I am leaving him in this one. Don't leave um, him in. So just trust you your did good things for animation and and see it as like I want to show my interpretation of the Lord of the Rings. And I I didn't mention I mean Peter Jackson and Richard Taylor's version of the Lord of the Rings is essentially John Howe and Alan Lee's version of Lord of the Rings. Right. Which I'm sure they were you know that alone I'm sure they felt it. Yeah. That, that was like, big, I mentioned the phone call they received when they were asked to come to New Zealand and concept out the Lord of the Rings for fourteen hour movie. I can't even right. imagine. What yeah, would you do? Like what would you do in that situation, right? I'd be like, Do I uh you know, do I have to? Or I would just email it, check your inbox. Here here's my vision. <laughs> yeah, check your it's already there. Already created a dossier. Or, or I was like, I want a, I want a, uh, I want a arcade cabinet, a Marvel vs. Capcom two, in all of the rooms, including the bathroom. Hey, okay. <laughs> Someone this... didn't like my Ralph Bakshi joke. I can see. Yeah, Air Turkle says uh, <laughs> they're looking for the unfollow button. Uh, but I oh, wanted wow. to Ray as as. Um, contrasted with Tyler you your your work always strikes me as very very personal and but yeah. but do you have subjects that you're too afraid to paint well I think that's the uh, one of the biggest hurdles as an illustrator uh going into this type of like gallery work is the idea of doing personal work is scary in itself because you know just like Aaron was saying like it's in a sense uh, it's, it's the same situation. Personal work is near and dear to your heart and everyone does personal work. Right. So like, how are you, the, 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 uh, the paralyzing aspect of it is, will anyone care? Right. And you don't want, because the last thing someone wants, want uh, an artist wants to be is, you know, is people to not take them seriously. Uh, and so if you put yourself out there, here's the way I see the world and people end up saying, eh, you know, it's devastating. And that's all as a, all you think of as an artist when you're, you know, initially, especially what I, I mean, at least what I thought of as an artist when I go to hang my stuff. So, you know, it's, uh, it could be tough, you know, and, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you, you got one shot at this life. Why not? Right. It's like, it's it's because you're going to drive yourself crazy if you don't do it no, and mom's spaghetti yeah, yeah. So yeah it's mom's like spaghetti. A, you, you kind of like it's like a carpe diem you know like a yellow yeah. kind of thing <laughs> i liked mom's spaghetti you didn't need to like see this is why it's hard kate 
for this whole 2021. 20, I know. Let's be nice to Tyler thing when he does stuff like that. I just wanted to say YOLO on the internet. I just wanted to say YOLO on the internet. The, 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 Tyler, the want. way you look, you're like looking down. It looks like you're looking at, at your phone and like, like Googling. Oh, like, God, I, what should yeah, I, I say? Like, this camera in like a position where it's <laughs> like, like you're the this, thesaurus, you know? Yeah. He's like, is it I'm Bolo? Just like, Bolo? Yeah. Bolo? No, that's yeah. not. That's Bolo. not Bolo. Bolo. <laughs> what was that? Where is it? No, hold on. Live brush. Oh, what's that? That Robin Williams movie, Bolo. Bolo Society. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what be on the lookout for uh you only live once bolo yolo that's my new thing yeah. bolo yellow <laughs> it's gonna be welcome to live rush bolo yolo our banner that's gonna be our banner for next week that's gonna be our banner yes yeah. no images <laughs> that's oh gonna be gosh. awesome um, did we just did this show just hit another level? I think it did. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, everyone left and there's nothing left to watch. <laughs> but um what was right you were saying though that it's like you're worried about putting the imagery out and having people be like, man, eh, I don't really care Yeah, you this. just don't want to be you don't want to be ir irrelevant, right? Who the hell wants yeah. to do that? And I think I get I think when it comes to the kind of stuff that I want to do and I'm like I'm afraid to do it's a combination of that, like, oh, nobody wants to see this. They want to see me working on whatever properties I've worked on for so long. Or um, or it's like, oh, this is super well trod territory. Like this is right. no one needs to see this imagery anymore. Um, but there's a fear of like being derivative. Right. Yeah, like, oh, you're just aping this person. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, great. yeah that's gonna, another fear. You're gonna paint you the Lord of the Rings again. Like that's right. original. No one's done that right. yet. Right, right, right. Yeah, like yeah. And and my with, with gallery work, it's like, oh, you're gonna paint figures in a landscape. Never seen that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but everything has been done before. Hey, here's a question from Nick Deluca ninety six. I'm having trouble designing characters. Do you have any tips or exercises that I can practice to get better at this? I um, mean, it, it's depends on I, what, what do you do. I, that's a great question. <laughs> What do you do? Oh, but, um, really depends on what kind of characters you are after. If I think we kind of talked a little bit about this, but it'd be good to like maybe deep dive into this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if it's creatures or monsters that like brushing up on anatomy is really good. Understanding comparative anatomy is really good. Um, looking at all kinds of creatures out there is super good. But um, for actual character development, it is super good to look at costume construction, armor construction, how those things work. And attitude is super important. So if you're have, if you're struggling with your character design, try and design your character from a, a particular mood or attitude or feeling as opposed to just someone sitting there statically. Is it's going to go um, a real long way if you can build a character just based on a an attitude, you know, like. So you're thinking know. about who they are, like, as, yeah, who, like, who, yeah, like their, what's their motive? What's you know, like, if they were an actual actor and you, you were telling a story with them. Yeah, like if someone described to you, um, let's just say like. John McClane from Die Hard. Like if someone des described that character to you, how the would Christmas you get hero. across his whole attitude that you see throughout the movie? How right. would you get that across in one frame? Um, and then that that amount of um, problem solving goes a long way in in trying to design a character. And and you want when you're designing characters like that, you want people to immediately understand what that character is all about to get that vibe through right away. I mean, yeah, it's not deep it's, dive into this, but well, no, it's, it's interesting because a lot of it is based off of, and this might be a product of Tyler and I's um, training, and but like the audience has like 
viewers themselves, like the audience, if it's an audience or someone that, you know, while watching the screen or playing a video game or walking in a gallery, they don't have, they only have a certain amount of time. They know it and they're only going to, they're going to spend that time on something that interests them. And so you have to be able to catch their eye and hold, hold their attention for a long period of time. Uh, and that's, um, that's not easy. And that's the reason why, like we, we took classes in, um, you know, all of our fundamentals and we talk about composition, we talk about good shapes, we talk about good values and all this stuff. And um, it's, it's because you, you have to kind of catch the, the audience's eye and, and then hold their attention once, once you do, like uh, once you bring them in. So, you know, a lot of this stuff, like when Tyler talks about, uh, you know, uh, characters and stuff, he's, he's, he's doing it in the service of making things more interesting. Right. Um, yeah. And, and more, cool is more king compelling. in that scenario. Right. Cool is king. Right. And, but you know, there is a, it's kind of like, you have to really learn how to do that. Otherwise it's, I think it can turn into like, you, you have to be really educated in order to make something cool because people don't, re you know, like that's the reason why maybe like super fans of a work aren't the best at giving criticism of like other work that just to make it better, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, no, totally. You, um, it's actually, that's one thing I really like doing is when I'm designing characters for particular games or there's a lot of times I'm redesigning an old character that I'm not, um, invested in at all so like you're saying like the the super fans are, are very invested in nostalgia and um they're, they're kind of blinded by a um an old view of whatever particular character um you're trying to, to work on so i often find when i jump into a scenario like that not knowing a lot about that character kind of helps me see it from a different angle so right you were saying like it's it pays to um, educate yourself on on these things so that's that's the first thing i do is i start and i go look at like every every version of that character that's ever been so i do tons of research and i pick all the things you know I, by i have a big stack of thumbnails of all the different versions of that character and i make them really small and then i can see the major shapes that are consistent in every version of the character. Um, I'm, I guess I got in the weeds there on, on what you're saying, but um, that's, that ends up being a really helpful approach for me when it comes to like redesigning older characters that need an update or a facelift. Yeah. So I've, I've facelift a lot of characters for um, a bunch of different companies, but mostly I've, I've facelifted a lot of characters from like older Wizards of the Coast properties so i think uh saucefire uh summed up basically what we were both trying to say by saying next week on live brush ray and tyler both redesigned ultraman and wind up accidentally painting jet jaguar <laughs> <laughs> exactly um yeah i was gonna work on this but forget it i'm working on that <laughs> we're doing ultraman i honestly always wanted to do like a like an Ultraman uh, comic, like a painted comic. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. That would be really the, cool. It's almost did. as almost as cool as this comment from Nick. Question, thanks for the answer. And just a specific add-on to my previous question, how do you render out chain mail? I don't see many artists tackle this and I can't seem to design my shapes to get a good design. Also want to just reiterate that Megazord has five robotic dinosaurs, which yeah. makes it better than Ultraman. Yeah. <laughs> that's you know what it's it's just okay it's okay just chalk it up to age right it's like you know clearly you've been lied to <laughs> the folly of youth <laughs> the folly of youth nick uh but okay you, Tyler, t okay Tyler, here we go. I gotta, you you I gotta, had you showed know. me this and it blew Please. my mind <laughs> do you remember okay, when you showed me this though i do i do okay. this, is a, this is a brush that i made but we have to start at the beginning to understand this um Number one, F chainmail, correct. <laughs> chainmail is rough. And so in this image here that I'm working on, I've just reduced the chainmail to like a big shiny form on this guy here in the foreground. And chainmail kind of has like, when you look at it from a distance, it's just a bunch of horizontal lines, um, but with high specularity. But 
I wanted to not have to draw out chain mail a long time ago. And I'm going to bring up the brush here in a sec so you can see. But um, I was like, well, who does the best chain mail? Um, and I think, and everyone should look this up, that Angus McBride does the best chain mail. Oh, man, she's so good. Um, so if you look up Angus McBride's like medieval illustrations, um, he did Lord of the Rings stuff too. He did all these like historical manuals. Dude is just an absolute beast. But he could do he did this Viking book. Um, it was just like a historical Viking manual, but it was all Viking illustrations. And his chainmail in it is ridiculous. But he did it all with a brush and acrylics. So I was like, okay, how can I do that? But without killing myself um so right. i made this i made a chain mail brush um please do this if you're working digitally i'm going to zoom in here so you can see this brush uh, actually i don't even remember you see i actually don't remember this wait i thought this is what you're talking about no man you actually showed me paint you showed me how how to paint it in oils when you're doing the Macbeth piece oh okay okay yeah that's a different okay we can talk about that but this is the chain mail brush for digital ease <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you can see here it's it's two chain lengths, right? Because this is how chain chain mail is constructed. But I have it repetitive, so I can just brush out chain mail. Then you go down below it and just brush out the chain mail. But you can make this brush really easy. It's just just that. But um, ah. the the stuff I was painting in oils was actually pretty much I was kind of doing what Angus McBride was doing, and it's those alternating loops. Um, but I'm trying to remember which piece I was doing that on, Ray. Which one? Was okay, it? I'll tell you right now. It's when Macbeth was going into like the cave or something like that. And he oh yeah, cloak and Macbeth he's and Banquo shoulder. illustration. Yeah. Right, and that was. I think in that particular one, I was just reducing it down to that specular form. Right. Where I was, um, wherever the specular highlight would be on the metal, I was just kind of putting in a bunch of dots. You did it in two layers. I know that. Right. So I did, um, I did like, I glazed in the darks, right? So the, right. the reverse, the reverse of that hoop, which would be like the deepest parts of the chain mail. And then the, the on the other side, after that had dried, I was just hitting it with um, little bits of highlight to um, to be the specular side of it. Chainmail sucks. Yeah, it totally does. I never nailed it. I never painted it enough to actually nail it down. It's I don't know. Like I mean, I, and, like, when it came to digital, I was so. It's such a pain in the butt that I, I just made a brush so that I could just brush it on. I don't know if I may have used it in one or two illustrations, but I, I used it as like a framework. So I'd I'd make a separate layer. I would paint that, um, or I'll bring it up again, that one particular brush. So I would make another layer and I would paint the chain mail in like this, but you can swoop it. The way I've built this brush is you can make it wrap around forms. Just like that. So it looks like it's wrapped around an arm. Oh, yeah. And then I would get another brush. And then I would I'd um, clip mask it to that. So then I could just paint the only on the chain mail itself. And then I would pop in those speculars. Whoa. You get like you can finesse it. This is just super quick, but you can get as you keep messing with it, especially if you um duplicate one of the layers and just knock it over a little bit. I mean, it looks really mechanical, but you can keep messing with it until you get like a really nice, like actual chainmail look. And it's great for um concept work because who's going to sit there and spend that much time painting yeah. all the chain mail well that's the thing right it's like people don't realize how fast you have to work as a concept artist 
and how everything's based off of uh, economy, you know? Yeah, it's you're not proving to anyone that you can paint chain mail. You want to get the whole concept right. across as fast as possible. Uh, there's a couple of follow-up questions there from Nick. So would you use that brush after you get your values in, like painting a flower design on a vase? And when you use that brush, I imagine you have to go in and alter some of the shapes so it doesn't get too repetitive. Probably not in a concept context, but but maybe in a final image. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I tend to get the, if I'm painting a, a whole figure that has some chain mail in their body, I tend to paint, like if it's a sleeve of chain mail, I will paint it as one form. So like the whole arm is metallic essentially, like you've, you know, like Silver Surfer or something. So I know where the specular highlights are gonna be. And then I'll brush in that chain mail over that as um, an overlay or something transparent and it'll preserve what's underneath there. And then it's like, oh, now it's chain mail. So it's, it's just a really quick way to do it. And then, yeah, because it's so repetitive, I'll go in and sort of mess with the edges and, and clean it up or um, like maybe break some of the links or just add some character to it. Cause chain mail is not, um, it's not like perfectly clean. Yeah, we have a follow-up question on that. Uh, <laughs> this is a very popular topic uh, from Aaron Rufino. Now, can Tyler show us how to make the chainmail glow black? Yes. Photoshop can do that. <laughs> it's amazing. You just turn on the outer glow. Glowing black usually means it's purple, so do that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think Going the client black. specifically requested it grow black, not purple. Okay, so. okay. Do that. No, it doesn't work as well. It doesn't work as well. <laughs> Tyler, yeah, remember this when you tell we, the client that they're wrong? Remember in school we used to like, uh, uh, what like uh, was it? Stephen Blair used to uh, one of the great illustrator teachers, you know, that we had would would always tell us to like throw capes on on people and have them blowing in like yeah yeah you know like uh directions to help with composition and, and like for you know it was like this crazy cool trick that we we I all use like it. yeah and now like you know all of us would have like cloaks flying yeah. in the air you know every everyone in the class would have like every <laughs> illustration would be like you know a, a metal music video where everyone just <laughs> The, the wind is just hurricane for winds. Hurricaning. Hurricaning. <laughs> In one specific, it's a very isolated band, though, right? Because not everything is like. Yeah, their hair is not moving, but their clothes no, are going around like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this is very common. All right, I, still, so I, I am... still do that trick a lot, though, man. I love using the, a cape. Oh, yeah. Or something yeah. To, to create tons and tons of motion. Totally. It's like a, it's a, it's like, I think you had said it. It's like, it's a really great arrow, right? It's like well, built in. Yeah. And we had laughed about like Stephen telling us to do this and, and seeing everyone have capes blowing around in their illustrations. And then, then we were like looking at Greg Manches' stuff and he's doing the same thing. There it is. Yeah. Like, oh shit. Okay. You can do this at a professional level. Right. We laughed and then we, we laughed when, uh, we cry. realized how how good of an idea it was it's, it saved us time <laughs> yeah oh god so i am i'm actually almost done with this oh my god don't start finishing stuff now ray dude it's 2021 season ray, two is this a final or is this a study for a final i'm not I, so this I will be this is a final study that is going to act as an underpainting for uh my next piece and you'll see uh, so it'll look like, well, I, I kind of threw it down, but um, it'll look like um, next week I'll have a six by 12 painting on my easel that will, so it'll look like this, but shrunk down because I'm going to get it scanned uh, and uh, shrink this down and I'm going to use this as an underpainting and I'm going to use, I'm going to do a six by 12 color comp because it's going to be an 18 by 36 painting. Uh, and to so to answer your question, you'll just have to wait and find out. <laughs> but you are going to do more on this piece 
for the absolutely the yeah okay, absolutely cool. yeah cool. so this is just a study for it ultimately it's going to be a uh, a a an oil painting and do you find it's easier or more effective to work pretty large in those comps just because you, you know, know how much fidelity you're going to need when you get to the final yeah you know well i used to yeah i used to work really small um who was that that asked that question was that Evacuate or no it's me no the if i worked small if i was gonna if i worked large i just asked you tyler did so Evacuate. okay great so you know what yeah Evacuate. <laughs> come on kate <laughs> Well, this is 2021. I'm trying to be nice to Tyler. Oh, yeah. So, my bad. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I know. But I thought yeah, he did. Be what, whatever. Ray. Yolo. Bolo yolo. Bolo yolo, baby. You know? I get it. Boy, boyo yo yo. Boyo yo yo. Boyo yo yo. Boyo yo yo yo. So, I used to do them really small because I was like trying to get through them and I would continue to do them really small. But I, I actually really, you know, uh, and then I've tried them where they're one to one, you know, like where like if it's I'm doing the same size as my final painting, like Donato Giacola does. Um, and I, I found like the large ones, like, I'm like exhausted. Like I hate drawing at the end of them. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm never going to do this again. And the small ones, I always it's like you were saying, like the fidelity, it's just kind of lacking. I, I find like I can get some nice results, but it also it just causes a couple of headaches when I have to go to the because it's so small, it, uh, you know, I don't have to think about certain parts in um, that at that size versus when I actually have to tackle the largest, the larger final. So I found that uh, I'm, I've been trying these like somewhere in between. So they're kind of medium sized, uh, and I and I kind of really like them. And what I've been doing, what uh, and this is the thing I showed showed last stream where it, I'll do a smallish. Um, like a comp, if I need, if I need like higher fidelity, let's just say like on that figure and I needed higher fidelity on the, on the face, um, I'll just do, uh, I did a study. I'll, I'll do a study of the face, just a detail. And then I'll just combine the, uh, the two sketches, the two studies together in Photoshop. Um, but you know, let me, let me go get that right now. Hold on. I'll be right back. I'm almost done with this anyway. Oh, wow. Great. But um, I mean, that's probably why Struis and kind of did his comps at almost like half size, half one sheet size. Yeah. So, yeah, but he would redraw everything. Yeah, it was just like more fidelity. It was crazy. When Ray says he's done, what it what I'm what I'm hearing is he's done with the show. Done, done, done with the show. Done with the whole art career. No, um, done with the step one of a bigger piece so I, i'm just i'm trying to keep score of whether tyler or ray finishes first well oh okay you know yeah, I mean, so it doesn't it sound eventually. like you're actually done done no yeah, well i'm done with this step which means that i'm done before tyler is which means i win this round <laughs> okay okay win deal, deal, deal. Head, you know what i mean not the war just the battle <laughs> Tyler, right now it kind of looks like <laughs> it kind of looks like in your painting that there's like a big spaceman and then another spaceman real close behind him. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't crap me, dude. <laughs> oh. Now that's good. See, this is good feedback. So now I need to <laughs> want to mitigate that, right? <laughs> This is where I this is where I get to the point in this um, sketch where I'm like, is this do I want to keep doing this, or do I do I really want to do I want to go back over to this one? Is that a better comp? You do whatever you want, man. I listen. Well, no, I voted in the second. second vote. Guessing myself a million times. You voted in the second one. Yeah, which was who, who I was. Bl no, I was. I voted in the second voting. I didn't vote in the first one. The second one was blaming tech who was to blame for technical difficulties. Okay. <laughs> so here, here's the thing I was showing. It was just, just, okay. So this is a 36 by 36 piece. That is uh, the, a, a comp 
or uh, a study for that. Now it's a, a face, so I wanted to up the fidelity on the face so I didn't have to redraw everything. So I just did a study of the face. You can see that. So uh, I'll combine the two, I'll scan them both in and then combine the two in Photoshop. So I have a, a really well put together face with, with a good body, you know, and then if I ever needed to, I, you know, if I needed to do other details, I would do that, you know, I'll do as much as I need, you know, um, but that, that's, that's using the same thing. I don't foresee that with this, but um, yeah, I think it's, it's good the way it is. Well, it's also, uh, I mean, it's good for people to know that they should do studies of things. If, if yeah. you're too worried about committing, you should do a little study just to make sure you know where you're going to go with something. Yeah. Maybe it's it's it, just it, one element. Isn't it incredible? Like, I know we, I know we did a lot of paintings just from like, you know, no studies and we just did them, you know, and willy nilly straight from start to finish last uh, season. But when you're working on like complicated imagery, instead of just like heads, uh, which aren't for us right now, isn't that they're not complicated. They're just fun. When we were first learning how to paint a head, it was probably the most stressful thing. Like we wouldn't have been able to pull that stuff off. Right. I mean, and have yeah, fun I mean, with it, it be stressed out of our minds. Yeah. And so we've done a lot of, you know, head heads. So, um, but with a lot of this more complicated stuff, you know, you, you don't want to waste your time. Right. And so, uh, in order for you to figure out whether or not it's going to work, uh, you just do a comp and it's because it's faster and, you know, the issues, if, if there are issues in your studies, design issues, uh, or, uh, in your studies, then they're going to end up in your final if you're, they're not resolved. So it's great that you, it's great to catch them and you can catch a lot of them and, uh, correct them quickly when you're doing that. So the, all that stuff that Tyler's doing right here, right? Like can you imagine if he was just sort of drawing all of that stuff in, he probably wouldn't see that there might've been an issue until weeks later, you know, hours and hours and hours later. Uh, and, but if he'd had to repaint the entire figure, cause it didn't work, you know, like all that stuff can be handled, um, in a study because you don't have to paint everything up all the way in order for you to get that answer to know yeah. whether or not something's not going to work. And I've only, I've only spent what, Maybe an hour and a half, two hours on this, um, and I'm just messing around to try and get a cool composition. So it's it ends up being useful exploration in the end. Yeah, and it's fun. And I can I mean, work I, a lot I, faster. And I'm just I really want to try and mess around with this a whole bunch. And I I think I'm realizing I'm getting to a point where it's like, okay, I might need to build a model for this guy impose it at the right angle so that you can see the whole point of what I'm trying to do with them. So that, that'll probably be what I end up doing because this is, Oh, bless you. <laughs> um, this is kind of where compositionally where I think it'll be impactful, but I think I just need to pose it differently. Ray's just leaving. He's out of here. I'm out and done. I got scared. I didn't know. I saw, I heard this crazy sound. He's got scared. He ran. The bat again. <laughs> I can mute the stream, but I can't mute the Zoom call. <laughs> <laughs> I have that power. I will never make Tyler host ever again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so maybe, that's that's it. maybe you need to be host. That's your uh, 10 minute warning, Tyler voice. Oh man. Okay. 10 minutes. What, what were we, were we, were we, um, Duncan on Ridley Scott movies? Is that what you're doing? No. Oh, <laughs> I was going to, there was He's a movie. Oh man. What was the movie? <laughs> I just forgot. I got to watch the do list. Yeah, you should. Um, everyone out there should, it's really, it's old, right? Um, yeah, but that sword alien. fight you sent me was terrifying. Sword fighting is awesome. It just made me not want to even like, I'm like, I will never, ever get into a sword fight. 
am yeah, it, like it, I'm, um, I'm running. It emphasizes the fact that it's like, oh man, this those things were sharp and <laughs> easily be maimed. It's not like a ching 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 ching. Oh, we're having fun. It's like, oh, that guy got past my defense, and now I am horribly maimed and probably going to die. <laughs> dead and it's over <laughs> but uh, as a good. i mean it's a dated movie of course um but the cinematography in it is just phenomenal so everybody check it out um okay so director's cut it was there a director's cut in the duelist um i don't think so i just i just feel like i just feel like you know uh Ridley just I, I always get worried that Ridley doesn't I have a feeling that really is a little little indecisive and like he uses the director's cut it's like no this is my real vision with it and like dude you know like I he might I mean, need a couple maybe, of, I don't know I feel like part of it is him butting heads with production companies yeah that could be it actually that's back it. back then in like the late 70s early 80s that's true. I think I think there was a lot of companies wanted to do a certain thing he didn't want to you know especially in the case of blade runner so they just kind of right. took it from him and <laughs> didn't get to do anything he didn't get to finish uh, really we're gonna just kind of take this <laughs> so i think that's where we get all those director's cuts from him is that his creative vision was compromised by a production process was the duel his first uh, uh, before first blade runner Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, he did Duelist and then Alien. Oh wow! So, so it's you just said his, it was his, that was his first movie. I think it was his first. I, there might have been something before it that was sort of um, more like student filmy, but I think it was his first. Maybe the chat can check. No, don't worry. We'll just call it. Hello, yo, 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 yo. You're never gonna say it right. I'm never gonna say. I'm never gonna do it. I'm never gonna do it. There we go. I, I, I could finish a piece, but I won't be able to say, yolo. Sausfire says it was his featured directorial debut. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Sausfire. See, I'm is really fast at Google. I'm telling you. I assume Sausfire just knows all this stuff. Doesn't have to look any of it up. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna. You're right. Exactly. I'm not gonna assume that Sausfire is just sort of googling it. I will do that sometimes. You know, back when we used to talk to people in person and, and hang out in human space. What? Just make stuff up? You no. Know, I mean, we would say with enough conviction like, that people would is, believe you. I don't know, and they'd be like, "Don't. Nobody look it up. Nobody look it up. We're just gonna <laughs> pretend that we know the answer." Yeah. Seriously. Whatever I still we decide is the answer. Watch this. Best best Star Trek film. Not Besides. Again. Not again. <laughs> I've never heard of Star Trek. Star Trek? Uh, and not again. Galaxy Quest. Next. Right. Question. <laughs> the best Steven out. Seagal film. Oh, man. Best Steven Seagal movie? Yeah. <laughs> the answer is Taken. <laughs> taken. <laughs> I was going to say um, Executive Decision with Kurt Russell. Yeah, the best Steve version Seagal's of the best the best version of Power Rangers, Ultraman. Uh, Godzilla versus uh, Megalon. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was the worst thing about that is that Jet Jaguar came out with like like he was like the singing some kid song I remember and I'm like, <laughs> this it was just like. It was such a bait and switch on Ray. I mean, oh, yeah. Man. Okay. Guys, it was like the. This yeah. is, no, sorry. This is a great question from Aaron Rufino. I can't believe we haven't oh, done yeah. this one before. When are the guys going to paint scenes from Ray's favorite movie, Flyboys? Uh, no, Aaron. Oh, yeah. What? No. Yeah, no. no that's a good idea. Where are you getting your information that's from? Good hey, does, it, does Ray have a Wikipedia article? Can we update <laughs> it to include his favorite movie, Flyboys? Yeah. yeah. Now we should. Uh, Ray Bonias is an, an American <laughs> Ill, a fine artist and illustrator whose favorite movie is Flyboys. That's it. That's that's yeah. the whole article. <laughs> he loves it. Not a lot of people, you know, not critically acclaimed, but it's okay. He just <laughs> likes it. <laughs> so that's why I said the movie with James Franco. Is James Franco in, in Flyboys? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, he is. 
Oh no, he's not the. Oh no, when he was when he was pursuing a serious career. Oh, and then he then he went and made fun silly movies, and now he's pursuing a serious career again. Tyler, where do I sign this thing? Ray Bonilla is an American film enthusiast specializing in fly boys as well as a part-time painter and illustrator. <laughs> the fly boys historian. <laughs> His personal email address is ray at raybonilla.com. Please send him all your fly boys. Backslash, fanfic. yeah, backslash fly boys. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to oh. invent the backslash for the email just for this. Oh my God. Gonna, oh my you know, god if you want to just what get happened? into the email the uh, password is flyboys yeah what happened rules. to my career right <laughs> what happened it's to my career b-o-y-z that's well, i don't know i don't want to break it to you right flyboys wasn't that good <laughs> it, yeah i still want my refund from you <laughs> do you remember okay i'm not gonna without saying names uh, uh, your friend of ours loved loved the movie. Uh, was involved with the movie Up from T- uh, Pixar, and oh yeah, yeah, and would always ask us like, would always ask us. Uh, so they worked at Pixar. Would always ask us if we've seen Up, but Up hadn't been released in theaters, but he had seen it because they were screening it. Well, yeah, because he, he, br- he would tell it. us that he, he would bring all the time. Yeah, he would like his his employees that they would go and see it, like all of his friend, you know, his colleagues and stuff. It's like seeing up, and so, you know, Tyler and I would be like t- make make him talk about it so that like maybe he would like I don't know pull some strings and have us, you know. Yeah, I figured and, it was an invite to get to see a screening at Pixar. R- Right. And so we're like, yeah, oh no. Wow. Up. Yeah, that's crazy. And so and then he'd say like, "Well, have you se- have you seen up?" And we're like, "No, it's not out yet." Oh, you got to see it. It's great. And we're like, "What well, is not out yet?" It's like, "Oh, you know, a bunch of us went went to the theater over at you know, at the studio and and saw it. It was great. It was so great. You got to see up." And he he loved up so much. I remember this. Yeah, I was in my it was my thesis show. And my, my parents came and it was really great. And I didn't see anyone uh, for the whole thesis show because, you know, when you're, it's almost like your wedding day as like an artist, like uh, you just, you, it's just a blur. You're talking to people, tons of people for like 30 seconds at a pop mm-hmm. and, and then it's over. And I remember us going outside and I was like, where's, where's my dad? And out he comes with, with our friend who worked from Pixar and he was like, oh, yeah, very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. My dad had never met him before. And but he's like, oh, so what was that? And he goes to my mom. He goes, oh, yeah, we got to see this movie. What was that movie called? Uh, and he's like, <laughs> oh, up. You got to see up. And it still hadn't came out yet. Right. And so it's like, it's like if you and he said, if you don't like it, I'll give you your I will refund your money, you know. Uh, and you know, of course my father was like, well, why don't you give me the money now? Just in case, you know, that sort of thing. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was so strange. It was like, we knew he worked for the company. He's like, you don't have to sell this movie so hard. It was like, it was like he was going to get a commission or something. That is true. (laughs) No, but I mean, the movie's great. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but check it out. (laughs) It's still not out. Oh, it's not. So it's still. It got canceled, and yeah, yeah they, so. they killed it. They killed it. Um, I did see Soul. That was good. Oh, oh here's yeah. great. I'm you watching it. Yeah. It's, it's hey, first, uh, uh, it's seven o'clock, boys. Time to show. Okay. So, all right. So, thank you so much, everyone. Um, we're gonna be continuing this. I am going to be next. Uh, I did sign it, as you can see. Uh, I'm gonna be uh doing a color comp of this. Uh, so definitely tune in um yeah so uh, I, uh my name is i've been uh ray, ray bonilla you could find my work on uh, ray bonilla painter on uh, instagram um i'm also going to be uh this month i'm actually the featured artist in uh, uh a, a new uh, st- uh, subscription service called studio bridge which is um, presented by the um, visual arts passage and illustration uh, uh, Academy and, uh, 
if you sign up, there's a link, I think, in the um, in, in uh, the chat bot. Uh, you'll get a 30 day free trial. I'm going to be or I think it's 15, 15 or 30 days. I'm not sure, but it's a, a free trial. You can see me actually um, talk more about my work and actually do demos and things like that. And it's a whole community. It's really great. So um, feel free to check it out. And it's a pretty low, low price. Every, every month they have a, a brand new artist and you get access to all the previous recordings and demos and lectures uh, and things like that. So uh, it's a pretty cool thing that I, uh, that I was uh, invited to do. I mean, congrats um, on that. It's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So uh, Tyler, where can they find your work? Yeah, and I'm, I'm Tyler Jacobson. You can find me on Instagram at Tyler Jacobson Art. My website is www.tylerjacobsonart.com. And yeah, I don't have anything special going on at the moment. So that's it. Maybe something cool will happen next week. We'll see. Why not uh, tune in next week to see what, what suit Tyler is wearing? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to upgrade tuxedo next week. Bolo. You look good, man. It should be it. Bolo, Bolo YOLO, Yolo, baby. Bolo YOLO, baby. Good night, everybody. Thank you to Kate. Good night, everyone.